This is the local oscillator and mixer circuit of a typical AM superheterodyne radio. It's also known as the converter. There is a lot going on with this circuit. What this circuit does, bottom line, is that it takes two different frequencies and subtracts them together to make a 455 KC signal, modulated signal, that is then amplified by the IF stages. I have a link to this drawing in the About This video. If we take a look at L1 and C1, that is a tank circuit and it tunes the modulated radio frequency from the stations. L3 and C3 is another tank circuit and that tunes the local oscillator. Let's take a closer look and let's start with C8 in the lower right hand corner. It stores the negative voltage for the automatic gain control but it also provides the RF return path for L1 and it also supplies the return path for our local oscillator. Now the local oscillator's tank circuit is made up of L3 and C3 and it's C3 that is varied to determine or vary the frequency of the tank circuit. The DC path for our cathode in the 12SA7 is shown here. From pin 6 it goes down through point A through L2 down to ground. The DC path and biasing for pin 5 of the 12SA7 is shown here. Starts at pin 5, goes down through R2, and then down to point A through L2, and then down to ground. When the radio is turned on and the 12SA7 starts to function, current starts to flow through L2. As this happens, the magnetic field of L2 starts to expand and cuts across L3, inducing a current in L3. This voltage is then impressed through C5 up to pin 5, which is the control grid. Now the way that this is set up, this is positive feedback or another way to look at it is point A and point E are in phase. In other words, when A goes positive, E goes positive. When A goes negative, E goes negative. I've connected my scope to points A and E. The top trace is A and the bottom trace is point E. And as I vary the frequency, you'll notice that they stay in step, in phase. In other words, when A goes positive, E is going positive, and when A goes negative, E goes negative. But also, when I vary this, you'll notice that uh, the bottom trace will vary a little bit in its height. If you do not have an oscilloscope, one way to determine if an oscillator is oscillating is to measure the voltage on the control grid. In this radio, the voltage should be a minus 10 to about a minus 12. Here it's a little bit low, but as I increase the frequency, from 600 kcs to 1400 kcs, the voltage does almost reach a minus 12.
it's this positive feedback or in phase feedback that keeps this local oscillator oscillating. Let's take a look at the 12SA7 plate, the output. What we have here when the radio is tuned to a station is we have the modulated RF from the station, we have the oscillator frequency, we also have the oscillator frequency plus the RF, and we have the oscillator frequency minus the RF. Those are the four major lobes at the output of the 12SA7. When the oscillator's frequency, local, minus the modulated RF frequency from the station equals 455 KC, that's when it can travel through the IF stages of the radio.